Now that we're all working from home, under stay-at-home orders, doing video from home, what better time is there to explore live streaming from home? Welcome to AI Adventures, where we usually explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufeng Guo, and on this special episode of AI Adventures, I'm going to give you an inside, behind-the-scenes look at the tools and tricks used to make the live stream magic happen. So fire up your creative engines, because we're going on an adventure into the world of YouTube Live. When it comes to making live streams work, there are three major components to think about to help make your efforts successful. From least to most important, they are hardware, software, and content. Let's now look at each in turn. Hardware. We all love to talk about and debate the gear, microphones, cameras, lighting, but it's the least important aspect. In the end, all you really need is to meet some minimum threshold of acceptable audiovisual quality. It's often more important that you've displayed the code on a screen that's large enough than it is to ensure that the white balance is perfect. You should take stock of what the scene looks like before live streaming, though, and ensure that you feel confident in that space and lighting. You'll typically only take up a corner of the screen, so the shot doesn't really need to be professionally framed. Now, let's turn to software, where the sound and image is stitched together and streamed on YouTube. There are many tools for live streaming, but I will focus on a tool called OBS. OBS is open source and cross-platform, and it seems to be well recommended by the live streaming community. Let's see what it looks like. When you first launch OBS, you will be prompted to go through a wizard for some basic setup before trying to tweak settings on your own. OBS operates through the concept of scenes and sources. Sources are things like your webcam, a microphone, a window on your screen, or an image or video file. Scenes are made up of sources and pieced together however you like. For example, you could imagine a live coding scene which is composed of your display and the view from your webcam in the corner covering up part of that display. You can lay out multiple scenes and transition between them. At a minimum, I would recommend having at least two scenes, a hold screen and a coding screen. The hold screen is used before you begin streaming and allows you to ensure everything is working and that you can time your entrance. It also allows for a smooth transition into the coding view. Once you conclude your live stream, you can then switch back to your hold screen so you know when you're off the air and you can turn things off appropriately. I use a different screen once I finish to show a different text after my coding session has concluded. An additional scene that I have added is my webcam input just by myself. I use this when I just want to talk to the viewer directly, and I don't need the coding screen shared. This typically happens at the beginning of my live streams. It can also be a useful scene if you need to type in plain text keys or secrets. Now let's take a look at the YouTube Live interface and how to create a live stream event. Go on over to YouTube and click on the icon of the camcorder in the upper right-hand corner and select Go Live. Schedule a specific time for your stream, create a title, write a description, and you're off to the races. In the Stream Settings tab, copy that stream key and stream URL. You'll need these for setting up OBS so you can stream to the right account. Be sure not to share your stream key, ever. It's unique to your account, and it should be treated the same as a password. Someone who has possession of your stream key will be able to stream as if they are you. Luckily, though, if you do accidentally leak your stream key, it's fairly easy to get a new one generated, so don't sweat it too much. When you've got everything set up and the scene that you want to start with, it's time to start streaming. Click Start Streaming in OBS, and after a few moments, your stream should appear in the preview window in your YouTube dashboard. Once YouTube determines that your stream is stable, the button in the upper right that says Go Live will illuminate, and you'll be ready to reveal your live stream to the masses. Onwards now to the third major consideration, content. What will you talk about on your live stream? Live streams have much lower levels of expectations than a pre-recorded, highly edited video. So this gives you more freedom to ad lib and develop your voice. Be sure to engage with your audience in the live stream comments. This helps build your viewer base and increase engagement. Before you go live, you'll want to promote your upcoming live stream to your followers and fans. 
since the goal is to have viewers on the live stream. Also consider your time zone and your target audience's time zone. I try to get on Twitter somewhere between three and 24 hours in advance and let people know that I'm about to live stream. I'll also typically schedule a tweet to go out the moment the live stream starts. I can't trust myself to remember to tweet right before I click go live, so I let automation take care of it for me. Finally, I'll close with some tips about how to have guests on a live stream. Perhaps you want to do live pair programming. OBS supports transforms on your sources. This will enable you to choose the Hangouts window as a source and crop the boundaries down so that only their video is showing without any of the rest of the Hangouts UI. This both reduces distractions and saves you space on the screen to show the code. When I have guests on, I also have an extra scene set up with only myself and the guest both on the screen at the same time without any code. This can be a nice way to introduce your guest. You'll also want to stream their audio alongside your microphone input. While this is not necessarily needed for solo live recording, guest interviews need the sound of your guest to go back into the live stream. On OSX, system audio is not available by default and needs third-party software. The tools for this are constantly evolving, so you should check online before the latest recommendations. In this video, we covered some of the basics for getting started with live streaming. If you want to learn more, there's a wealth of resources online for everything from better hardware and fancy visual effects to plugins that allow for even more interactivity. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures, a special one exploring the art, science, and tools of live streaming. I hope that it was a useful overview. I'm Yufang Guo on Twitter at Yufang G. And if you haven't already, smash that like button and subscribe to get all the latest updates right when they come out. For now, try out OBS and get your live coding on. Thank you.